During the early 1980s, and in the wake of Halloween and Friday the 13th, slasher movies were produced left and right to cash in on this surging popular trend. Many of these movies have come and gone with little fanfare, while others have gathered cult followings. Then there is 1981's Just Before Dawn, a survival stalk and slash film that got a second win due to subsequent home video releases, which in turn were driven by people who remembered it and its solid, effectively eerie narrative so fondly. Hey everyone, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back at one of the most unheralded horror gems from the early 1980s, Just Before Dawn, directed by Jeff Lieberman. To call Just Before Dawn a mere slasher would be a bit of a misnomer. It certainly has those elements to it, down to the occasional killer point of view, with the opening kill itself being pretty wince-inducing, with a male victim taking a machete right to the crotch and out the backside. Not to mention that there is the tried and true trope of young 20-somethings going into the woods on a camping trip, are warned not to go by an elder, and proceed to be systematically picked off. What sets this movie apart from most of the slasher fare of the time period, however, is its ambition and not staying simply within these slasher tropes and boundaries. Director Jeff Lieberman has openly discussed in multiple interviews and commentaries that his primary influence for Just Before Dawn is the movie Deliverance. And like that movie, to make Just Before Dawn as much or more about surviving a nature setting as surviving local killers. These influences can clearly be seen because the woods and its surroundings and elements are as much a character as any actual person in the movie. It truly feels like these young people are now in a world all to its own, where lush greens and aesthetically beautiful waterfalls mix with the dangers and warnings of imminent killers, as well as calls of wild animals or the gushing sounds of cascading water fountains and rivers. Likewise, setting this film apart from slashers of the era is the score, in which you don't get the stereotypical symphonic or synthesizer shrieks, but instead the quiet of crickets chirping, the rustle of bushes or leaves, the sound of river water flowing, or the unique haunting whistling throughout the film. Even the score that plays over the title sequence is rooted in more naturally made sounds over more traditionally arranged instruments and music. Interestingly, the film's score was created by Brad Fidel, who would of course go on to create the iconic score and theme of Terminator 1 and 2 a few years later. Also what sets this film apart are the characters themselves. These characters, unlike those so commonly found in other slasher movies, aren't ones that are so stupid or annoying or pointless that their deaths are eagerly anticipated and there is even a slight satisfaction that they won't be around anymore due to these annoyances or complete unlikability. The actors who play these characters aren't bad either and the transformation of the final girl Connie played by Deborah Benson is quite the arc and interesting to say the least. Early on in the movie, she dresses rather conservatively with what seems to be little attention to her appearance, yet as the movie plays along, her appearance and her boldness change and develop greatly. By the end, she goes from a certain conservative meekness to full-on babe in survival mode. Hence, there is some correlation between her self-assured femininity and that ultimately being a strength as opposed to her boyfriend who cowers after being injured and she fends off a killer in one of the most unique death sequences from a horror movie. She literally shoves her hand and by extension her arm down the killer's throat until it kills him. There is even the sound effect of air being released when she pulls her arm out. Quite the unique and memorable kill sequence. The two twin mountain men themselves which is a bit of a twist in the movie since the audience is at first led to believe that there is just one, are large, not so attractive, and have this odd way of laughing that's more like someone who's wheezing over actually laughing. It's learned that they are the products of inbreeding, so as a result their family who lives in the woods hides and protects their murderous ways, saying the campers are quote, releasing the devil by being there. 
George Kennedy, meanwhile, of Naked Gun fame, plays the elder forest ranger in a more minimal part, and he does a good job with the role, though his casting seems more of a means to have a quote name in the movie, rather than him being a necessity for the role. Just before dawn's pacing might move a little slow by today's standards, but it nonetheless stands the test of time as a well put together movie with good acting, characters, and killers, and an even better environment, score, and cinematography. It's an essential 80s slasher survival movie, as it is easily better and more solid than most that were made during the era.